talk all about Colon Cancer Awareness Month with Dr. Wayne Panulo, who's a gastroenterologist for, what, 35 years or something like that? Yeah, uh, 32 years. <laughs> 32 years? Yes. All right, yes. I, add, I added three more. Yes. So you're at Yale and, and other places around Connecticut. Yes. Um, colon cancer, let's talk about it. How prevalent is it? So um, about 140,000 patients will come down with colon cancer each year. About 50,000 will uh, die of colon cancer. Across it's, the country, in Connecticut? What are you talking uh, about? Um, this is uh, nationwide. Okay. Um, it's the third leading cause of, co of cancer death in women. It's the second leading cause of death in men. So it is a significant uh, illness, and uh, the importance is it's preventable. And people have to understand that. And it's preventable with screening methods, and the best screening method we have is colonoscopy. A lot of folks are afraid who haven't done that. Here comes 50 years old, and I know I have to have a colonoscopy, and they, they get this thing in their head, the, the liquid you have to drink and all of that. So right. how would you sum up what happens when you have a right. colonoscopy? So I think the worst part of a colonoscopy is the prep, not the actual exam. And the preps have gotten a lot better. They're more palatable. Uh, it isn't as much volume, and so people should really discuss the preps with their doctors and not be afraid of them because there may be other options that would be uh, better for each patient. Um, the scopes have gotten better. Our resolutions increased so we can find smaller polyps. Um, the anesthesia has gotten different, and uh, patients tolerate the anesthesia very well. They wake up very quickly. They don't feel the nausea that most people think you get with anesthesia. They feel like they got a good sleep and a good rest. Um, so. I wouldn't be afraid of colonoscopy, and we know that colonoscopy prevents colon cancer. It decreases the risk of cancer by uh, about 70%, or in mortality of 40 to 50%, by removing small polyps that are benign that can be uh, developed into cancer, or find cancer at a very early age, uh, early stage. So uh, people should not be weary, and they should be calling the doctor to get this done. Um, Overall, in the uh, whole country, about 50% of people are getting screened. Just 50%? Only 50. Now, it's better in Connecticut. It's about 70%. We're calling for 80%, and um, uh, there's no reason that everybody can't get screened. Um, and uh, we're trying to get the word out that they should get this done. Um, there are some um, articles that I've read about where there's a method by which you can swallow something right. and it kind of does its thing. Right. Does that work? So Be the, you know, because it's not as invasive. Right. So there are other methods of screening other than colonoscopy. Colonoscopy is the best. There is this pill can that you can swallow. It's really meant more for the small intestine and not the colon. And actually, uh, because you can't direct the device, you can't move it, it just goes right through, you're going to miss things, obviously. And you have to really prep more than you have to do for a colonoscopy. Oh, okay. So that's not really an advantage. I think once we develop the technology that if we could actually control the movement of the device, that would be a, a, a big boom and might change things. How many cancers do you find on a, on a daily basis? I mean, people have polyps, right, and they can right. turn into cancer. Right. But are you finding cancer every day of people who come in and get scoped? So about 30% of patients who get screened will, will find precancerous polyps at least. So it's not uncommon to find um, um, precancerous polyps because colon cancer is common. And by removing these precancerous polyps, we prevent the cancer. Um, hopefully we don't find a lot of cancers. We want to find the polyps and prevent the cancers. Occasionally we will find um, cancers in patients who are asymptomatic, but the good news is if you find those, they're going to be at an early stage, they're going to be resectable and curable, and patients will do very well. What are symptoms of colon cancer so, that maybe we miss? Yeah, so the, the big ones we get concerned about are rectal bleeding, uh, change in bowel habits, a family history is very important, and um, about 10% of us have a first-degree relative who has colon cancer, which increases your risk dramatically. Uh, it also depends on the age of the first-degree relative that was diagnosed. Um, colon cancer screening now, the recommendations are to screen at age 50 in all the general population. If you're an African-American, we would screen earlier at 45. If you have a first-degree family member, we would screen at 40. Wow. And because the, the incidence of colon cancer is actually decreasing because of the advent of colonoscopy, uh, which is great, uh, but we still have a long way to go. But the concern is that uh, we're finding more and more patients who are younger than 50 who are developing colon cancer. Although the incidence is increasing, the numbers below 50 are 
uh, decreasing. The numbers below 50 are increasing. Why is that? Is it, is it diet? Is it because we're screening more? We don't know. I can conjecture, but we really don't know. Uh, but I would uh, caution patients that if they have any rectal bleeding, that they get checked, that they shouldn't ignore symptoms just because they're young, because we are finding a lot of colon cancer in younger patients that we didn't find before. And uh, if they have a first degree family member, come in, get screened early. And if you have a very young family member, that increases your risk dramatically. Hmm. So uh, if the family member's you know, 20 or 30, your risk is very, very high. And we would screen you 10 years younger than the family member that had the cancer. As a doctor, for a long time, as a gastroenterologist, you've done a lot of this. Um, and I, I would assume that you have patients that you find cancer in that is probably going to kill them if they had just come in and gotten screened. How often do you see that? We still see that despite uh, all the publicity. And I've seen doctors who come in who have not been screened. And they actually, I, I know a doctor who had, uh, he does colonoscopy. He did not have his own colonoscopy. And by the time they found it, it was too late. So it's really sad. and. Uh, it's something we can change. Being in this profession for more than 30 years, how has this changed? I mean, 30 years ago, you, it would have killed you because we didn't have the methods we have today? Well, there's been a lot of changes, one of which is because more people are getting screened, especially since Katie Couric's uh, mm -hmm. famous colonoscopy on TV that pushed really the government to pay for screenings. Uh, that has really changed dramatically what's going on. The screening is the key. Yes, we have better surgeries once you have cancer. Yes, we have better chemo. But if you get screened, you're not going to get the cancer. So uh, I've had one, you know, 50, here we go. Right, right. And people will say, I think, well, I've had one at 50. I'm probably going to be fine for the rest of my life. And to that, you say what? So I would say that if you have a, your first screening and it's clear, that your risk of developing colon cancer is actually lower than the general population that hasn't gotten screened because they may have that 30 percent risk of polyps so your risk is even lower so you should f have some comfort in that however that's with the proviso again that you don't get symptoms later on you don't get a family history later on and the prep was good the prep is the key because if we don't see well we can miss things and so the prep is crucial that it's well done and patients pay attention to it uh, Many patients, they read it the night before, and they didn't follow the diet, and then it's not quite as good, and then we may have to bring them back at a shorter interval than 10 years. What frustrates you the most? You've been a doctor a long, long time. What frustrates you the most in, in your um, uh, patient population? That they don't listen, that they don't, what is it? Um, I still like being a gastroenterologist. I love what I do. I don't get frustrated too much with patient care. We try to reach out to them and help them as much as we can. Um, I think, you know, it, it frustrates me when I really reach out so much and you, you put so much time and effort in and then they kind of abandon the whole evaluation and, uh, you know, at our increased risk and put themselves at jeopardy. What is the treatment for colon cancer? Once you find somebody with colon cancer, what happens next? Right. So you get surgery, and hopefully it's not uh, it's limited. Uh, and if it's limited, you're done. If um, it involves the lymph nodes, which is the area outside, then you get uh, chemotherapy. And if certainly, uh, if it's metastasized outside that area, it's more extensive chemotherapy and maybe even more of resection. Occasionally, it, you know, if it goes to the liver. We do do liver surgery, but that isn't that common. I would say mm -hmm. only about 25% of patients who do have metastatic disease to the liver uh, have disease that we can resect. And only about 25% of those are curable. So you're only going to cure 5% of people overall who have liver meds. So most of those patients aren't going to do well. Okay. What has cancer, Colon Cancer Awareness Month done for your profession? Because I think we're really taking that, that to heart, whether it's colon right. cancer or whether it's right. heart disease or breast cancer. Right. I, I, I find that people talk it up, and uh, I think it, uh, it alleviates some of their anxiety because they give their experiences during colonoscopy. say, oh, that wasn't so bad. You should go. And then they have more comfort in that because they know someone who's gone through it, and it reduces their anxiety about it. Um, I think also um, they may hear some horror stories. 
and then they get scared and they say oh I should go in because so and so got this and that and it's time for me to get checked and I really should take this seriously under most circumstances does insurance cover it what's what's the cost for mm. folks so for screening uh, all insurance will cover uh, age 50 or above if, if they have a family member they should cover 40 uh, and above um, and then if you have symptoms they'll they usually cover that too but that isn't it's not a screening if you have some symptoms that's considered a different test mm -hmm. you're looking for something else and how many people have problems with cost when it comes to this I'm surprised because screening is well covered uh, even in plans that don't have good coverage elsewhere screening is one of the things they really tend to put a dime on and pay for and reimburse for it. <clears throat> so uh, although we're living in the high deductible era which is uh, wearing on everybody's pockets it seems that screening is well covered uh, so far. As a gastroenterologist, what's mm -hmm. your elevator speech about getting checked? Um, I just say it's, uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, let me get you through it. Um, the prep's the worst part and we'll fix that. And, uh, it, you know, the prep and the IV is the worst part, not me. So the colonoscopy is painless. I mean, they shouldn't fear pain with a colonoscopy. The anesthesia is such, uh, it's a deeper sedation than we used years ago. Um, and therefore, the patients don't really feel anything. If they feel anything, we just kind of up it a little bit, and they don't remember feeling it. So it's really not a painful procedure. Um, I'm sold. I'll have okay. the next one. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Panulo, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. And re-educating us about how easy this is to ward off cancer. Yeah. So uh, I'm just glad I can get the word out. And uh, screening does save lives. And we should uh, really get out there and call your docs. Thanks so much. OK. Right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find us a witch and find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep going to the grocery store, but mine, just to save time. Skip right ahead to the nice ride.